Тема очень интересная, тема очень серьезная. И позвольте э, мне представить слово первому спикеру. Это Синтия Буддо, президент Collaborative Innovation Group, партнер, партнер и основатель Russia Innovation Collaborative, участвовала в TEDx Перм. Чудесно. Вот в Перми э, Синтия уже делала, я уверен, блестящее выступление. Итак, предоставим ей слово. Пожалуйста. Спасибо. Uh, no pressure. Okay, thank you. Up, up. Okay. When you said I had a great presentation in Perm, I guess that puts pressure to make sure that this is great. Uh, so I feel very much under pressure right now. Uh, but really not, because I think this is a topic that is pretty easy to talk about. Um, uh, and I really enjoyed your comments about what is a failure and what is a mistake and do we have the right to make it. What I'm going to be talking about today is really the perspective of making mistakes and failures from the United States, and specifically from being an entrepreneur, starting a startup business in the United States. Let me see if I can work this. So where am I located right now? I'm actually in, well, right now I'm in Tomsk, and uh, yellow blue Tomsk, I like it very much. Uh, but where do I live? Uh, where do I work? In Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is one of the biggest innovation clusters in the world. And I'm, my, my business is in the Cambridge Innovation Center. There's 200 companies. There's about 900 entrepreneurs. We have, we're located right at MIT. We have Harvard. We have the number one biotech cluster in the world. Uh, Android was invented in my building, as well as Second Life, the, the developers were there. So a lot of interesting technology uh, and innovation is happening where I am. But where, where am I really? I'm actually in the center of making mistakes. And in the technology world, we don't call them mistakes, we call them experience. And that's a very different mindset to making a mistake and a failure. One of the quotes, and I've got a lot of quotes in here, which I really like is, um, failure doesn't mean that you're a failure. It just means that you haven't succeeded yet. And speaking of those quotes, um, oops, I'll go back. Oh yeah, so mistakes, it was just a little shorter here. Thomas Edison, who we all know, and he's got a million quotes on, on mistakes. I made more mistakes than anyone. And then sooner or later, I just patented most of them. Again, this is the mentality of the inventor and the entrepreneur. Success is 99% failure. But what is failure? In the United States, we really do believe that failure and mistakes is just a pit stop. It's just an experience on the way to success. Thomas Edison, who I just quoted, had 10,000 failed experiments before he actually um, found the light bulb. Milton Hershey, the Hershey bar, had three unsuccessful companies before, before uh, discovering the chocolate. And Steve Jobs of Apple, I mean, uh, we all have our, our, our uh, MacBooks and our iPads and iPods, he was fired until he came back. None of these people that I mention are considered failures. Again, I have great sayings on failures, and I'm not going to read through each one of them, but the way to succeed is to double your failure rate. Um, I failed my way to success. The season of failure is the best time for sowing the seeds of success. These are lots of quotes. In, again, we talk about failure and making mistakes as a positive. But I'm wondering, do you believe it? Do you think it's okay to make a mistake? So I'd just like all of you to raise your hand. How many of you believe that making a mistake or having a failure is a good thing? Okay, I think it might be 50-50. Um, for those of you that raised your hand, I want you to think, if I asked you to tell me what you learned, would you be able to? And for those of you that didn't raise your hand, if I asked you what you learned, would you be able to? 
What I'm saying to you today as part of this talk is the reason that in the United States failure is accepted and making mistakes is accepted, it really is believed that that's the only way you're going to learn and, and gain experience. So now I'm going to go to Apollo 13. And the average age in this room wasn't born in 1970. So many of you probably don't know about Apollo 13, the launch that went up to the moon in 1970. Um, it was a movie called Apollo 13. So how many people have watched or know about Apollo 13? Yikes, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. Um, well, the, the, the phrase that was coined as a part of this is failure is not an option. The other famous phrase was, Houston, we have a problem. So those are, the two, those are the two famous phrases. But failure is not an option. Now what does that mean? Failure is not an option in this instance about Apollo 13. They were very focused on the fact that this launch went up to the moon. Before they actually landed on the moon, they had an explosion in their oxygen tank and they weren't able to land on the moon. And all of the attention turned to, how do we bring these three astronauts back to the Earth? Everything they had planned to date was thrown out the window, and all new thinking had to take place. Now, to say this for, an, for a, a launch like this, so much preparation goes into it. To have thrown everything out the window and to have to start from scratch was a huge undertaking. Um, so what were the lessons learned? Again, from failure is not an option. That you had to define the problem. They had to understand what this problem was. They had never anticipated it before. So there was a lot of analysis. They managed change. They actually used different, they used the, uh, the lunar landing module as their main module. They used all sorts of equipment for things that weren't intended. They really thought about things differently and manage change. And the key thing, I think, is think it's often easier to quit. When you face adversity, sometimes the thought process is, I need to protect myself, I don't want to make an even bigger mistake, and I'm going to, quote unquote, abort the mission. I'm going, to, I'm going to scale back. In each one of these, the lessons learned from Apollo 13 was, they did successfully define the problem, they managed change effectively, and they did not quit. And what the, was, was the result? That knowledge plus motivation plus manipulation skills, lots of iterations, passion per, and per, perseverance ultimately resulted in a new innovation, bringing these astronauts back down to Earth. So what I'm saying is Apollo 13 was not a lesson in failure is not an option. It was a lesson in how do you face a mistake and, and, and reignite yourself and face that, that adversity. The reason why I want to talk about failure is not an option is it's exactly the opposite of what startups do. Failure is not an option conditions people to not take risks, to be conservative, to not think outside of the box. In companies that, that say that you know, you're not supposed to fail, People will, if they fail, they're going to be fired. So there's no incentive for creative thinking. Um, for startups, failure is not an option. It means that they will try five or 10 or 20 approaches until they find one that works. They're not stuck. They're not you know, afraid to act. They are able to make these mistakes and then move on to the next and to the next. And ultimately, by setting very aggressive goals, not the safe ones, but the ones that mean you probably will fail, means you're going to achieve that much more. And again, that is the mentality of the entrepreneur and the startup. Failure and making mistakes is essential in creating aggressive goals, having creativity, and making sure you're moving to the next step. So compare this startup to a big company. Startups are like poker players. And how many people play cards, play poker, and make bets? Not a lot of poker players in this room. Um, poker players, they make bluffs. They take big risks. They change directions. Um, chess players, on the other hand, 
They think moves ahead. They think strategically. They play defensively. Um, they have things to lose. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to protect. I don't think, one, I'm not saying one is good or one is bad, but the mentality of the entrepreneur and the startup is about taking those risks, making those mistakes, because without that, you're not going to make the big gains. So let me, let me just tell you, from our, my perspective, we've talked about failure and making mistakes. What is it about making, what's a, what, what does success look like? Success, when I talk to the entrepreneurs, and again, I work in a building, all entrepreneurs, all people that are, that are doing this day in, day out, it's about bringing the right people together, the right team of, of people working together. It's about finding the right idea, right? You need the right uh, 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 new technology, new product, whatever that may be. But ultimately, the two other aspects of success are timing. Have you timed the market right? Have you timed your product correctly? Is the, is the market ready for your product? And luck. Every single successful entrepreneur will say there's an element of luck in it. And what they'll also tell you is this. If you are successful, you probably can't describe why you were successful because there's these elements of timing and luck that are part of it. But when you're unsuccessful and you fail, you can step back and you can dissect and say, what of these aspects went wrong? And you can learn from those mistakes. And you can use it as experience for your next, for your next endeavor. So what is failure looking like in a startup? We often hear the terminology, fail fast. If you're going to fail, um, do it fast and move on to the next best big thing. When we're, I, I spend a lot of time talking to venture capitalists and trying to, to raise money. And the worst thing is a long, drawn out no. And you don't know what the next step is and the next step. If a venture capitalist tells me no in the first meeting, great. I now know I'm not going to waste my energy on this. I'm going to go do something else. So, you know, a, a, there's not, obviously a yes is great, but a quick no is okay as well. Don't turn what should be a one-year failure into a five-year death march. So making mistakes, failure is about understanding when to cut your losses and move. And the last point is, is I had a big conversation with uh, my friend who does all of the acquisitions for Google. And this is his philosophy. If you have lost two out of the four founders, investors, employees or customers. If passion is lost in two of those four groups, cut your losses and get out. Is that a failure or a mistake? No, it's smart thinking and it's moving on and being agile and moving to your next endeavor. So this is a busy slide and I thought it would be very interesting. I did, I did a survey before I came here of the entrepreneurs and the venture capitalists that I work with. What are your mistakes? What did you learn from them? And I actually, this is by Skirt Gerber, the 10 things that he learned from, from making mistakes and having failures. Ultimately, if you're starting a new business, if you don't have revenue, you don't have a business. And many times while I'm working in Russia, I've been working in, in the regions with a lot of startup businesses, there's no revenue model. There's no thinking about what that's going to look like in a short term. So learn from others that have been there. You need to identify a revenue model quickly. Um, if you've, it, this happens so many times. People that have a little win, a little success, think they're successful. Well, that success is only momentary because you're facing a long road. You must stay focused. Don't believe your own hype, as they say. Um, stay focused. Focus on one thing. Keep it simple and move from one step to the next step. Um, don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. We were just talking about it takes a long time to plan and then you quickly move. I would ask you, don't make the mistake um, of, of taking too long because when we talked about that timing before, you're going to miss that window. The worst case scenario is the only scenario and I've been through this so many times, mistakes and failures around think, believing the optimistic side of your plans. Make sure you put plan for the worst and then double it and it, those projections will probably be okay. Um, proof of comps concept isn't optional. 
As an entrepreneur, just because you have a great idea doesn't mean you're going to get money for that idea or traction. Make sure you can bring it to proof of concept. Um, and then finally, failure is good. And, and I can't stress enough to you, in the business culture in the U.S., when you are in there trying to raise money or prove your new business as an entrepreneur, if you can't talk about some of the mistakes and failures and learnings that you've had as a result of it, I don't think you're going to be taken seriously. In every pitch I've ever been part of, talking about your mistakes and what you've learned is actually a crucial part of that sales cycle. So finally, what are we learning from being smart about failure? Be willing to fail, work with people that have complementary strengths so that you're, you're buffering yourself, find entrepreneurs that have already succeeded, deal with adversity and obstacles as opportunities, know the difference between those obstacles and deal killers, know when to walk away, know when to redirect uh, and reinvent yourself throughout your career. These are all lessons that I have gathered from the entrepreneurs and venture capitalists that I've worked with through the years. And then for me personally, I just wanted to end by letting you know that you know, I tried to rack my brains. What was my biggest failure? What, did I, what could I tell you that I, that, um, that I could share with you that you might gain something? For me, the greatest mistake you can make in life is to be continually afraid of making one. And I have an example which shaped my life. Uh, it happened when I was in my early 20s. It doesn't have anything to do with work. I was standing in a line at a bank, and there was an older woman who was in line getting cash out of the automatic teller. And there was a businessman, older businessman, behind her. And she was taking a long time. She wasn't familiar with the technology. And this man was in a hurry, and he began to yell and scream and berate this woman for taking time and how could she use the, how dare she, you know, take this long, and really made this woman, who probably felt awkward to begin with using the technology, worse about doing it. And I stood in the back of that line, and I did nothing. I did not act. And, you know, it's an example that, it, I don't know, it doesn't sound like that big of an example. I regretted not standing up for that woman to this day, 20 years later. And it really helped shape my life in terms of if I, am st if I am standing someplace and I am not acting, if I'm not having the courage to act, I am making a mistake. I am failing. And that really, really has shaped everything I've done since then. And I would just ask each one of you to think about, it doesn't have to be um, related to work or to school or to your life. It, it can be related to anything. What's the one memory you have of something that you regret, that you wish you had done something that you didn't, and how has that shaped your life? And I think that's really an important thing to, to think about, and hopefully um, during this conference today we can, we can think of some more of those examples, because I really do believe that having the courage to act is a way, and, and making mistakes is the best thing we, we can all do in this world. So, спасибо. Thank you. Спасибо большое, Синтия, за столь гуманистическое выступление. Мне сказали тоже подниматься сюда, чтобы видели. Очень понятное выступление. Действительно, репрессивный менеджмент э, пугает людей э, совершать... Э, страх формирует у них совершать ошибки. И спасибо, что вы э, акцентировали внимание, что каждый имеет право, каждый должен совершать, что-то стремиться делать. А, лучше... Потом, чтобы не сожалеть а, в будущем.